The theme for this year's conference is enhancing cross-border connectivity between Islamic financial centers in Asia and the Middle East. Experts from Southeast Asia and the Middle East are keen on tapping the liquidity in these populations by providing financial products compatible with their belief systems. This can be achieved by speeding up the development of Sharia-compliant products. To this end, Singapore Trade and Industry Minister Lim Hng Kiang has unveiled new income tax regulations that can help pave the way for more Islamic finance products to be introduced here. This is in keeping with our long-standing principle that Sharia-compliant products should not be disadvantaged in terms of regulatory and tax treatment where the economic substance and risk are similar to conventional products. Mr Lim says the Ministry of Finance will provide further clarification on the income tax treatment at a later date. In Islamic finance, the payment or acceptance of interest for loans are forbidden. This means that Islamic finance transactions like housing and enterprise loans may be subject to double taxation. Because uh, uh, Islamic uh, finance or capital market uh, interest is not permissible, so we have to do a transaction whereby uh, buy and sell, uh, sell and lease back. And this sometimes uh, uh, needs some clarity on, on double taxation issues, uh, which, is, uh, uh, which would help uh, for certain cross-border transactions. Still, the move is welcomed by industry players such as Maybank Islamic. They say it will aid cross-border flows and help give a boost to the industry.